Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we're going to be discussing a question that was brought to my attention from a potential client who was nice enough to send me a video link, uh, actually with details around the question. And I jumped on the video link, of course, it shot me over here to YouTube. <clears throat> and you can see it brought me to this video labeled Mach 4 Steps Per Unit Calculator Wizard. Of course, the video tutorial was uploaded by Mach Support. Many of you already realize Mach Support is really Artsoft, who is the distributor of Mach 3 motion control software, as well as Mach 4. And what his question was, does he really need to use a dial indicator or dial test indicator to perform axis calibration, or can he get away with a simple measuring instrument like the ruler used here that's actually being illustrated in this video? And the short answer is, of course, I do not recommend ever using a ruler to access calibrate any robot for manufacturing, period. Um, honestly, you're paying for repeatability, accuracy, and automation when you purchase a manufacturing robot. So I don't know why you would negate, you know, two of the features you're really paying for. You're really only going to get partial performance from your machine, um, especially as a ruler is only, only going to reflect certain inaccuracies based on an arbitrary measurement on a human eye or the end user's human eyes and God only knows how accurate our eyes are because everyone's eyes are different. I recommend using a, a very, very repeatable instrument designed for precision measuring like a dial indicator. A dial indicator typically will have a resolution of one to five ten thousandths of an inch. Some go uh, higher than that. And again, the investment on which you're willing to, you know, go with this length to get this, this machine calibrated is really based on you and your applications. I know many, many, many clients feel that they don't require that kind of tolerance. That's fine. Um, again, be reasonable. Using a ruler, and I know many, many YouTubers, I've seen it online many times, they're using rulers, and they're saying, you know, I've seen arbitrary measurements done using blocks of wood, and they drill a little hole in the block of wood, and then make the machine actually calibrate to that hole, and they think everything is great. What's interesting is, is they never do a cut on the entire length of the table. Exponentially, you will find on virtually all equipment that is automated, especially dealing with robots, you're going to find that the tolerance level grows exponentially the greater distance of travel you go with. This is inevitable, guys. No machine is perfect. And the idea of using a high-resolution measuring instrument is that you can see the smallest tolerance so that the longer you go, you can calibrate to that smallest tolerance level. I've broken this down in my theory covering axis calibration in Mach 3 in previous videos. And of course, also in the real world scenario of doing axis calibration with previous clients, I've got uh, a couple of them on there so you guys can see the process. And not only see the process, but understand the thought process behind it. These are, are the real points that I bring up when you're looking at calibrating quick and dirty, so to speak, and it's really dirty, using a simple measuring instrument like a ruler. You know, first of all, all rulers are not manufactured the same. We know that. You get what you pay for. Um, measuring instruments, it's definitely like that. We know you can go to Harbor Freight and buy an analog or digital indicator for, you know, pennies on the dollar. If you buy a Minitoyo, you're, you're easily going to drop, you know, 80, 100 bucks. Um, is it worth it? Are you going to see a huge difference? Well, it really depends on your budget, but is it worth it? I feel it's always worth it to, to purchase the best tool you can afford. That's the simplest answer. Is a thousandth of an inch a thousandth of an inch, regardless of the indicator? Yes. The biggest difference is which tool, which investment, think about it as an investment, will hold that tolerance and the accuracy over time. That's the real issue you want to look at. Now, I've had many Harbor Freight tools or the likes thereof last indefinitely because I know how to treat those tools. Not everybody treats their tools the same way. And not everybody drives their car the same way. I mean, there's so many different variables involved. It goes across the entire spectrum. The thing to keep in mind when buying or comparing, because I get asked this question a lot and I want to cover it, getting asked about precision measuring tools versus, you know, what's available at Harbor Freight. In an analog tool, you're not looking at a whole lot of discrepancy from a precision measuring tool other than the actual manufacturing process of it. The quality of workmanship, of course, is always going to be reflected on you know, a tool from Japan versus what you'd find typically coming from China. That being said, um, durability, 
life of that tool will usually be extended. I say usually, once again, it depends on the end user. The thing to keep in mind is, is when you start looking at digital tools, and I emphasize digital because most of us choose to use digital, especially with digital indicators, you typically find on cheaper Harbor Freight versions of these tools, they do not have battery indicators on them, which means over time as that battery degrades, you're not going to see the same resolution, yet the end user has no idea that the battery is at a certain point. So as he continues to use the indicator over and over again, or calipers, or whatever it may be, they're gonna have fluctuations where the higher end brands typically have a battery sensor in it that will let the end user know, hey, you know what? This battery is it needs to be replaced. And they also will have circuitry inside of them that will not drain as much power from that battery, uh, keeping their longevity longer. These are things that, again, are dealing with manufacturing and dealing with engineering. So keep these things in mind when you make your investment. Can you perform access calibration with a Harbor Freight um, measuring instrument and be fine with it? Yes, you can, absolutely. Just keep those different variables in mind so that you understand the caveats. I like to, because I do have Harbor Freight measuring instruments, I have many of them actually, and I like to write down when I've changed a battery last so I have a point that I can reference and say, okay, well, I'm going to change my battery, you know, three weeks from now. Regardless of where it's at, I don't know if I've used it all the time, but batteries are cheap enough typically you can get away with that. If you're using it in your shop all the time, it's worthwhile to do that. The other variable would be if you don't want to go through all that, stay with analog. Learn how to read an analog indicator, and I'm telling you now, the beauty of analog is you don't have to replace batteries, and you don't have to deal with that battery fluctuation. Um, and that's regardless of the two. The only thing you'd be looking at, you know, versus like a Starrett versus a Harbor Freight analog is typically, again, the, the workmanship of the Starrett typically will be better. So again, keep that in mind versus anything. It's like everything else in life, guys. The big thing here is that everybody is on the same page. Um, what this individual brought up is valid. What I'm seeing here in this video is not best practice. I think the, they actually put this video together just to show a quick and dirty method of performing access calibration. However, I do find this to be a little confusing and possibly even misleading to some because, again, it can create confusion when guys are saying, you know, well, some are doing it online on YouTube. I see guys using rulers. I see guys using measuring tapes. Again, we don't know the variables involved. Is it lack of knowledge? Is it laziness? Is it budget? We don't know what it is. Um, some guys just naturally feel, hey, you know what? I don't care about tolerance. They say that now until they go to cut, you know, three quarters of the length of their table and find that the tolerance of a ruler is exponentially going off the longer they actually go to cut from the center of the machine or wherever they, they actually performed access calibration from. These are the variables you want to understand. There is no shortcuts when you're setting this equipment up. You put your time in, you're going to get the time out. You know, I can give two different craftsmen the same tools, and they're going to produce, you can have them build the same thing, and they're going to produce two totally different items based on their knowledge and, you know, again, the workmanship. These are things you have to think about as you guys implement anything with this equipment, especially as you're maintaining your own and setting it up. So, again, uh, I hope I've made this really clear. I will put links in this video's description on access calibration, the videos I've put up, again, because I do get lots of questions on that. Um, and again, if you guys have any other questions, that's fine. Send them to me directly at storm2313 at gmail.com. Um, again, if you, if you can't reach me there, again, I'm real busy. And again, my email box is really filling up quickly lately. Uh, just message me at eDealersDirect. That is my eBay store. Um, to all my subscribers, guys, I respect and love you guys dearly. I will be posting uh, more videos. I'm trying to get more videos done weekly, but, of course, uh, we're going into peak season now, so things are getting kind of crazy. Um, just keep that in mind. Thank you all for your time. Take care.